Hello everyone, my name is Chog Park. I'm an assistant professor at Universal Arkansas Clinton School of Public Service. And I'm Robert Richards, also an assistant professor at the Clinton School of Public Service. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Justin Reedy. I'm an associate professor at the University of Oklahoma. Um, not joining us today are our colleagues, Lindsay Meeks, who is also at OU, and uh, Matt Nowlin, who is at the College of Charleston. Uh, hello everyone again. Thank you for your interest in our research project regarding the use of public deliberation forums on water resource issues. Uh, in this presentation, we will first briefly talk about current issues of water research in the southern and southwestern US, in particular from a perspective of underserved communities. After that, we will discuss uh, the usefulness and functions of deliberation-centered public engagement, as well as comparative assessment of public engagement processes on water issues. Then we will introduce past public deliberation forums we initiated before uh, regarding water issues. Finally, we will talk about our future plan on public dialogue project and assessment. Uh, first, let me briefly provide background information about water issues in our region. Next, please. Uh, in Oklahoma, urbanization and metropolitan growth resulted in uh, diverting water from rural areas to urban areas. One important issue is that water inequality problems are becoming worse and worse across uh, geographic and racial ethnic differences in, in Oklahoma. Uh, it, South Carolina has very similar water problem. Uh, in particular, the stormwater runoff and environmental pollutant are threatening water uh, quality. Next, please. In Arkansas, the Delta region is currently facing reduced water quality problems. Uh, the main reason for these problems is related to a significant decrease in government and community capacity to maintain water and wastewater infrastructure, in particular in African-American communities. Also, in southwestern Ritura, there is sewage contamination of drinking and surface water in Latinx community. Thank you, Chua. Um, so uh, we wanted to highlight the potential and functions of public engagement um, regarding water resources. These participatory methods have been used in the past to develop policy proposals for addressing climate impacts in coastal areas. And these methods uh, can enhance several phases of the policy process, uh, needs assessment, issue identification and characterization, policy selection and design, and policy implementation by increasing policy effectiveness, uh, legitimacy, and buy-in. Uh, and uh, we've also seen the value of uh, in employing comparative evaluation of these public engagement processes about water resources in multiple regions. So when we use similar measures across multiple regions, we can generate more robust findings. Um, that approach can highlight distinctive features of each engagement process. And uh, particularly with qualitative measures, we can uh, enable discussions of how engagement processes accord with different community needs or values. Now I'll turn it over to Justin, to discuss past public engagement processes on water issues in our region. Yes, thank you. Um, so we're, we're going to present uh, a couple of uh, examples of past work that we've done um, using these public engagement processes. So the first example of this is from South Carolina, a program called the Our Coastal Future Forum, which was a uh, project that was developed um, by me at the University of Oklahoma in, in collaboration with um, Matt Nowlin at College of Charleston and some of our colleagues um, at South Carolina Sea Grant. Um, and it built on sort of past work that Matt had done in South Carolina um, in concert with Sea Grant, as well as um, uh, resource managers in the, in, the, um, in the coastal region of South Carolina. And this was a, a community deliberative forum that we designed and implemented and evaluated um, that brought together uh, about 90 participants from around um, the coastal region of South Carolina. So many from Charleston, but a lot from other kind of areas of, the, of these, um, these coastal counties in, in, um, in South Carolina. Um, and broadly, the focus was on kind of climate change related issues and the different environmental impacts of climate change. Um, but many of those were uh, many aspects of this that 
um, uh, that the forum focused on were water related issues. So such as in, um, saltwater intrusion into freshwater wells with the sort of growth in the region and need for a need for fresh water, um, as well as the issue of sort of changing water temperatures and how that leads to potentially emerging infections and in recreational waters, coastal waters. <clears throat> So this process was um, was fairly successful. It brought together uh, people in this deliberative forum uh, to talk about these issues, learn more about them from experts and from each other, from from fellow community members, uh, and develop some a, a, a collection of sort of community concerns and potential solutions to some of these problems that people could um, uh, to could do as individuals, or that communities or or the region could try and take on. And those uh, report based on the findings of that forum um, was uh, was produced and given to um, regional and local resource managers as well as people in, in local and regional government in the area. I'll hand it back off to Robert to talk about another past example. Thanks, Justin. Um, so uh, we in 2021 in the spring and summer, we conducted listening sessions with Arkansas residents to learn about their concerns about water resources in their region. Um, we uh, from that input, we developed a draft issue framework in collaboration with colleagues at the Kettering Foundation. We tested that draft framework in a series of public dialogues in fall 2021. And then we got input from uh, water experts in Arkansas and from expert deliberation practitioners elsewhere and revised uh, the framework into an issue guide that covered three policy approaches. Uh, the first one emphasizing water conservation, the second emphasizing uh, conflict resolution approaches, and the third uh, emphasizing uh, climate impacts. And then we tested that second uh, framework in a series of public dialogues in spring 2022. Now I'll, um, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, in addition, um, uh, we want to talk about future public engagement processes on water issues in our region with uh, comparative evaluation. I'll turn it over to Justin to describe the Oklahoma process. Thanks. Yes. So we're working on um, some initial sort of uh, um, efforts in Oklahoma that are focused on working with tribal governments and tribal community members um, to uh, uh, to help us identify some community concerns um, in um, uh, in tribal governments in Oklahoma um, with respect to things like the cultural sort of or recreational value of, of water, um, as, as well as things like um, uh, water scarcity and the impact on agriculture in the region. Uh, and so this work is pretty pre preliminary, but we're, we're optimistic that we'll be able to accomplish some good things in this project. And then next, um, we're hoping to turn to sort of building that out to a community deliberation um, of some kind or a process of some kind that would hopefully yield some actionable science um, out, um, options, as well as help identify sort of priorities for action for various tribal communities and the next steps for implementation for trying to accomplish these, um, these things and tackle, um, tackle these problems. Uh, and Robert's going to talk a little bit about some of our uh, ideas for future work in South Carolina and, and Arkansas. Thanks, Justin. So in, um, in South Carolina, our colleague Matt Nowlin is currently organizing community meetings at four locations in Beaufort County among communities with different socioeconomic characteristics for issue identification and recruitment. Um, and from that input, uh, he plans and his colleagues to develop uh, deliberative procedures and informational materials that would form the basis for a second stage of public engagement involving uh, small group deliberation. And in Arkansas, we plan to uh, use a similar approach, um, possibly in conjunction with a, um, the CASC process that Justin referred to, um, holding community conversations and issue gathering sessions in the coming months to learn marginalized residents' views of relevant water issues, then developing informational materials, and then holding a second stage of public deliberation using small group deliberations uh, presenting policy options and action steps. For all these processes, we hope to employ comparative evaluation. We've developed a series of common survey questions and interview questions that we can employ to assess all of those uh, processes in the three different states to enable comparison. And I'll turn things over to Justin for the conclusion. Yeah, thank you. So uh, just to conclude, um, what we're hoping to sort of illustrate with our presentation today is that there does seem to be a great deal of interest in, um, in this kind of public engagement work, this sort of deliberative um, method or similar sort of methods for helping um, generate community concerns. Um, we think both kind of among members of the public as well as uh, policymakers, um, resource managers, um, government entities and agencies. 
um, as well as potentially funding agencies. So um, I, I think I might have glossed over, uh, we're uh, seeking some support from the South, the South Central Climate Adaptation Science Center or South Central CASC um, program to support some of this work in, in Oklahoma and potentially um, other areas of the country as well. And so there seems to be great interest in this as well. Um, we, uh, we think that the previous work that we've done on water resource issues um, and using these methods really shows sort of a good proof of concept in the value of these kinds of engagement methods for bringing communities um, together to help them um, uh, tackle these problems of water resource issues, which are gonna be a big, uh, big thing in the coming years in the United States. So, and with that, um, I think we'd like to acknowledge some of our collaborators um, who helped us um, with some of this work and are helping us sort of develop some of these programs. And if you have any questions, we're gonna provide our um, names and email addresses here. Um, uh, feel free to contact us and we look forward to having hearing any questions that you have during the Q&A today. Thank you.